The following is distributed by the Berean Call. Now, in our final segment, Understanding the Scriptures, the Gospel of Salvation. Again, along with Dave Hunt, here's T.A. McMahon. In our segment of Understanding the Scriptures, and that's what we hope that we can really convey here, that we're exploring the Scriptures. We want our listeners to explore the Scriptures with us. We hope that we're addressing doctrines, Versus teachings that are important, important in the faith, and really well, really worthwhile. Our topic has been for a while, and it will be, the gospel of salvation. And we want to look at the scriptures. We want to ask questions related to the scriptures so that we can really understand what the gospel of salvation is. The thing I'd like to talk about today, Dave, is what does the gospel do? We are to preach the gospel, to proclaim the gospel. But what does it do? There are people out there who said gospel. I don't even know what the term means. Well, Mm -hmm. it means good news. What is this good news, Mm -hmm. and what does it do? Well, we go to the scriptures, Romans 1.16. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes it. So, when you believe the gospel, you're saved. Uh, the Philippian jailer said, cried out in distress, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul and Silas said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So, first of all, what the gospel does, if I believe it, it will save me. Right. In First Corinthians 15, Paul says, This is the gospel that we preach to you, by which you are saved. So the gospel saves the soul, if you believe. Right. It delivers from sin. I mean, here's a word that we, we hear too little of today, even in, even in churches. Sin separates me from God. It delivers me from the penalty, for sure. Then as I understand and I grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord, he, I'm being delivered from the power of sin as well. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, I'm, certainly delivers me from the penalty. Right. I was thinking about Isaiah 118. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I mean, God cleans us mm-hmm. out through faith in him, through receiving right. the gospel. Right. Mm-hmm. One other aspect of the gospel that's important, it's for all humanity. Uh, John 3.16, people hear it, have heard it. I mean, it's one of the most proclaimed scripture verses. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's for all who who will, who will come to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's an offer that is made to the whole world. I believe that Christ paid the penalty for everyone's sins, not just for the elect. I don't believe in limited atonement, and the Bible seems quite clear on that. Second John, verse 2 says, He is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now, is that First John? I'm sorry, did I say second? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. First John, chapter 2, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yes, the gospel is for everyone. Whosoever will may come. Whoever believes in him, it says, should not perish but have everlasting life. In our exploration of, actually not exploration, but in our helping to explain and understand the gospel, sometimes we as evangelicals, we don't explain. I mean, you know, if we're so comfortable with words, we assume that people understand the meaning of words that we've learned to use as, as evangelicals. So I just want to make sure that when we're communicating this, that when we're teaching, basically, that people understand what we're, what we're talking about, that, that the gospel, as we said, is, it is for all humanity because all have sinned and of you know and fall short of the glory of God. It's not only for all humanity. I mean that's true, but if humanity, any part of humanity, does not believe the gospel, they're lost forever. So Jesus said it in 
John 3, 36, He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So I mean, the gospel itself doesn't do anything unless you believe it. And believing the gospel delivers me from the wrath of God because God's wrath is against sin. He is a holy, righteous God. And when man has rebelled against him and taken his own way, all we like sheep have gone astray, we've turned everyone to his own way, as Isaiah said in chapter 53, the consequences are, are, are serious. Condemnation. John 3.18. Eternal. Right. He who does not believe is condemned already. Mm -hmm. But this is a gift. And this is one of the points that we want to drive home. Some people say, well, look, uh, it's an exclusive club. We used that term before. No, it's not. It's for all. We quoted the scripture. All who will come. And it's a free gift. Well, yeah, we can develop the thought of a gift. But first of all, you say it's an ex exclusive club. Some people uh, object. They say um, it's too narrow-minded, right. dogmatic. Why should I have to believe that? Well, it's like saying, why should I have to believe that 2 plus 2 is 4? Well, the fact is, it is 4. Why should I have to believe? This is truth. We're talking about truth. We're not talking about ideas. We're not talking about philosophy. We're talking about what God has said. And first of all, God has said the wages of sin is death. You sin against me, you have forfeited the very life that I have given you. God says, look, I gave you life and existence for a purpose. Don't you think that the Creator has the right to determine what life will be? That sounds maybe oppressive, but it's not. When, as we mentioned earlier, the Creator loves us, and, and his way is best. So when man rebels against God and takes the life and existence that God has given him and presumes to live it for himself, in other words, he has literally robbed God of the very life. He's, he, you could say he's taken a life. He's committed murder. When I take the life that God gave me out of his hands and I insist on living it, for myself, the way I want to do it, because that's the whole problem in the world. We've got 5.8 billion people doing that. Well, then I have forfeited the right to be in God's universe. Mm -hmm. That's very serious consequences. Now, God loves us, and Christ died for us. He paid the penalty for our sins. Were that not the case, we couldn't be, we couldn't be forgiven. And now God wants to forgive us. Well, if he offers this to everyone... How stubborn do you have to be to say, well, that's too narrow-minded. Uh, why should I have to believe that? Well, that's the way it is in life. You don't get on a United Airlines jet to New York with a ticket to the Matterhorn in Disneyland, you know. But there are rules and regulations. You can't even play checkers without rules. Yeah. And or the pilot doesn't come out back <clears throat> to the airplane and say, well, which way would you like to go? Yeah, right. What button do you want me to punch next and see mm -hmm. where it gets us? The God of the universe, I mean, he's got a right to lay out the rules. And wouldn't we want to follow the rules? Well, we haven't. So we're going to have to come back to him on his terms. And that's what the gospel is. It explains the terms for being forgiven, for being reconciled to God, coming back to him on his terms. And I've got to be careful. See, unfortunately, Tom, the gospel is often presented as, well, you alluded to it earlier, oh, we've forgotten about sin. It's not sin anymore. I got, I kind of messed my life up, you know, mm -hmm. and and the things aren't going well for me. And now I've come to Jesus, and He'll make everything work out just the way I would like it to. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is that I am a sinner, and the wages of sin is eternal separation from God. And I'd better come to Him in repentance, and I'd better believe the gospel. Not because it's going to make me happier or, or bless me or make me prosperous. That's the sort of thing that's being offered now. But I better believe the gospel because it's the truth. And if I don't believe the truth, I will be seduced by the lie. 
I believe the gospel because when I believe the gospel, I'm honoring God. I'm saying God tells the truth. God really loves me. If I don't believe the gospel, then I'm saying God is a liar and I can do better than God. That's a horrible thing for human beings to reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The very idea that God would pay the penalty for our sins, that God himself would become a man to die in our place. Some people think, maybe in a selfish mode, well, wait a minute, I have to confess my sins, and I have to do this in order to... Well, what's, well you know, what's God's part in this? They don't recognize that he paid a penalty that's it's staggering. I mean, just think of it. God becoming a man and dying. If that doesn't motivate somebody to understand his love and to move in to want what he wants, to desire to let him take control of our lives. I don't know what that is. It's not just a physical death, of course. No. But as he hung there on the cross, I mean, what men did to him, that would only add to our condemnation. But he paid the price that his own infinite justice required for sin. It's only on that basis that we can be Mm -hmm. forgiven. The gospel, when I believe it, it brings forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness of sin and eternal life is a free gift from God. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't thinking about just the the physical side. I was thinking about the humility, humiliating mm. aspect of yeah. all of that. That's, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes we don't like to be humbled. And for God to humble himself. Wow. One of the hardest things, Tom, I'm sure you've experienced it. If you've ever been falsely accused and you realize that there is no point in responding, I mean, there's nothing you can do. Jesus was falsely accused, misunderstood, belittled, betrayed, humiliated, Mm -hmm. and he didn't respond. He didn't strike back. If he had, there would be no salvation for us. I think that's one of the most wonderful things about, about the cross, because Jesus, it says, as a sheep before her shears is dumb, he opened on his mouth. He didn't say, you idiots, I mean, I'm God, I could destroy you in a minute, but I'm going to die for you anyway, in spite of your your evil. No, he didn't retaliate, he didn't respond. Peter tells us, First Peter chapter 2, when he, he suffered, he threatened not. He didn't respond, but he committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. And Peter says in that, he gave us an example that we should follow his steps as well. But we have a tendency to want to defend ourselves, retaliate, get a little revenge, and so forth. But the gospel, what what does the gospel do? Well, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to those who believe. What does it save us from? It saves us from the eternal judgment that we deserve because of our sin. Please visit our website, thebereancall.org, to access our radio archives going back to 1999 and our newsletter going back to 1986. We offer daily updates by email or visit us on Facebook or Twitter. Are you looking for information about a specific topic? Go to thebereancall.org and click on Topics at the top of the page. Our online store is thebereancall.com. We offer a wide variety of books, tracks, CDs, and DVDs. Note that most of our e-books are free. I'm Gary Carmichael. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you can join us again next week. Until then, we encourage you to search the scriptures 24-7. Though none go with me, I still will follow, no turning back, no turning back.